So we're going to be talking about comitant strabismus, and in this case, esotropia, but it doesn't have to be esotropia. The, the key finding is whether it's comitant or not. So comitant means that the deviation is the same in all directions of gaze. So 10 ET, 10 ET, 10 ET, this is a very comitant deviation, and it can be like 8 to 10, it can be plus or minus 2 or 3, that's still comitant, it doesn't have the exact same number. And what we're going to be looking for on the duction testing, which is OD and OS, is we're going to be looking for a deviation and a restriction of movement. So in a comitant strabismus, the movements would be totally normal. And so you have a breakdown of the fusion, it causes the misalignment, you have full ductions and versions, that is a comitant strabismus, and in a kid that's almost always childhood strabismus, not a neurogenic etiology. However, you should know that if you start with an incomitant deviation, so in this case a minus three underaction of abduction, you'll have an esotropia in primary position that increases in the direction of gaze of the weak muscle. So there's certainly nothing when you look away from the weak lateral rectus, 10 of ET in primary, and 45 or more when you look away from the normal muscle and towards the phoretic or restricted or myasthenic or whatever the problem is muscle. So this is an incomitant deviation. This is 45, 10, and zero. This is comitant, 10, 10, and 10. Incomitant is a sign that it's neurogenic because you have something wrong with this muscle, the junction of the nerve. Comitant, however, could still be neurogenic because over time there is spread of the comitants. So if you have a weak muscle here, his direct antagonist will appear to overact, and if he overacts, then his yoke muscle would underact, and so there'll be spread of comitants. So over time, a six nerve palsy that started as an incomitant could become a comitant. So there's two reasons you need to know about the comitant from neuro-ophthalmology. One is that it was started incomitant, and as it was improving, it became comitant over time from spread of comitants or it was comitant from the start, it's comitant now and it was comitant then, and that could still be breakdown of fusion. And so an acute and comitant deviation could still be neuroophthalmic. We're gonna be looking in their fundus for papilledema. edema. We're gonna be talking to the patient and examining them for other neurologic signs or symptoms. But even in neurologically isolated, acute and comitant strabismus, in this case, esotropia, probably you'd be imaging that. The most common structural abnormality that we see is the Chiari malformation. But any central lesion that breaks the fusion can also produce an acute and comitant esotropia. And if it's an adult patient, we probably would consider uh, imaging, but you should be looking for the other causes. It could be the nerve, it could be the muscle, it could be the neuromuscular junction. All right, put that